I was uh, talking with somebody yesterday. You know, Christmas is, is great. And I love Christmas. I mean, I really love Christmas. And to make the, the Word of God alive and active, you have to let it be alive and active in you. And so, I mean, how many times can you read Luke 2 and Matthew 1 and get something new out of it? And yesterday, I did. I was in the bathroom, and uh, I was praying for a lady who was going through some serious problems. And I said, this is a season of miracles. You think about it. This is a season of miracles. And I believe that that's the word of the Lord for us today, that God wants to do something amazing in your life and through your life. You know, it began with, with Zachariah and Elizabeth, who were senior citizens. Now, if you know that or not, but they're senior citizens of the Bible. This Christmas story starts with two senior citizens, Zachariah and Elizabeth. And uh, they were, we don't know how old they were. We just never they were old and, and well, well advanced in years, is the, the way the Scripture says. And Zacharias was a priest, and it just so happened that the lot for him to go in uh, and to uh, serve the Lord came up, which, which was, you could go all your life and be a priest and not get to go into the, to the, to the temple. Uh, but his lot came up, and he was in there, and while he was in there, the angel Gabriel came to him and said this, your prayers are answered. I don't know how many of you prayed for something for a long, 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 long time, and it hasn't happened. This is a season of miracles. And he says, your prayer has been answered, and your wife is going to have a child. They were barren. They had no kids. And, uh, and so he said, how can that be since, you know, I'm an old guy and, and uh, he didn't call his wife an old lady. He said, uh, he didn't marry long enough to know you don't do that. And he said, she's well advanced in years. She's past that time when she can have kids. And he said, a miracle is going to take place. And it was a fulfillment of prophecy that, that, that what was going to be born was, was uh, John the Baptist. God works miracles. About six months later, there was a young teenage gal who was going to get water. And while she's at the well, Gabriel shows up again. Gabriel is mentioned four times in scriptures, two in the book of Daniel and two in, in the New Testament. Uh, he seems to be the messenger angel. And so Gabriel comes and says, Hail Mary. Sounds like a good start of a prayer. But he says, Hail Mary. The Lord is with you. And, uh, and then he says, you're going to have a baby. Now, she's a teenage girl. She's betrothed, which is a step beyond uh, fiancé being engaged. I mean, she was there in this and they're committed. And, and then she said this, how can this be since I don't know a man? And her, hers was an honest question. And, and uh, he said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and what will be conceived in you will be birthed by the Holy Spirit. Then she said something that we all have to say, That'll keep miracles flowing, and if you don't say it, you can stop them. That is, Lord, let it be to me according to your word. According to your will, according to your word, let it be to me. Because the Lord can do, but what can he do? That's what Gabriel said. He said, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. I want you to say that verse with me. It's Luke chapter 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Okay, we're mumbling. So we're going to, I don't know that I have it up there, but that's because I didn't put the scripture up there. Let me say it again. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now all of us once again. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. So whatever you're facing, the Lord is a God who does the impossible. He's a God of miracles. And that's the way it starts. And, and uh, it reminds me of a story that I heard of about a, a, a nun, Sister Sister Mary Ann, who was making rounds, she worked for home health care, and she was making the rounds. And while she's making the rounds, she didn't notice the gas tank, and she ran out of gas. Thankfully, she was just a block away from uh, a gas station, so she walked up to the gas station and said, uh, uh, can I get a gas can from you? And he said, can I buy gas? I ran out of gas just down the street here. And uh, he said, oh, yeah, but... I only have one loner gas can, and, the, and the, it's been loaned out. The guy went to, he went out of gas. He went to 
fill this tank back up again. But if you want to wait, I'll be glad to let you use that one and go down it. So she's, she was making the rounds, and she was supposed to be someplace. So she went back to her car thinking, I can be creative. There's got to be something in here that I can fill with gas. So she looked in the back seat, and in the back seat was a bedpan. <laughs> she thought, that'll work. So she takes the bedpan, walks back up a block, goes to the gas station. She fills the, the bedpan with gas and begins to fill her tank with, with the gas. Now, there's two guys across the street. They're Christian guys. But they looked at it, and they said, you know what? I've not seen this before, but if that car runs, I'm turning Catholic. <laughs> God does miracles. He does miracles. And uh, three miracles I want to talk about today that he wants to work in all of us. Number one is the Lord has come to bring peace to you. I don't know what is bothering you or, or troubling you. Here's what I want you to know. Whatever it is, peace is shalom, wholeness, spirit, soul, and body. The Lord wants to come to bring peace to you today, uh, no matter what your circumstance is, no matter what, what has happened in your life. He wants you to leave here different than when you came. And if you're anxious about anything, troubled about anything, you know, his name, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He's come to bring peace. So whatever is troubling you today, I want you to, to hear this and respond to it as a word from the Lord that he wants to change your circumstance and he wants to change you in the middle of the circumstance. Luke chapter 2 is uh, the scripture, first scripture I want to turn to. It's, it's, it's a Christmas story. But Luke chapter 2, uh, it says this. The angel said, don't be afraid. For behold, I bring you great tidings, good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. You're all people. So you got, this is good news for you. For there is born to you this day in the city of David is a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This will be the sign. You'll sign a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly, that's the way the work, Lord works often. Suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. It's a, it's a stressful time of year. Uh, all of our parties are over. Last night was the last one. We've gone the last two weeks with something every night of the week. Now, they've all been good. I mean, the, the uh, kids program on Thursday was great. The, the staff pastor's party was great. The council dinner was great. The staff all the staff party, the pastor's part, they're all great. But they're stressful. And, uh, you know, as a result, I don't have my gift spot yet. Does anybody else have all their gifts bought? Does anybody have all their gifts bought? You guys make me tired. <laughs> Does anybody like me? They're scrambling, and now, you know, you're going to get something for somebody. Scrambling, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. But, you know, it can be very, very stressful. And uh, so the Lord has come to bring peace to you in the middle of a stressful season. It's, it's, it's not only a season of miracles, but a season of stress. And I want to tell you a secret about the Lord. Uh, if you stress out and you work hard at it, then God stops working. But if you say, Lord, this is your problem, you work then you can rest. You know, take my yoke upon you, for my, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. You need to learn to just rest. What, what, are you, what are you dealing with right now? Rest. Well, you don't know, I've got financial problems. Rest. I've got relational problems. Rest. I've got physical problems. Rest. You say, well, that's easy for you to say. It is. But listen to me. You need to respond to the word of the Lord. The Lord wants to work in your life and in your situation today. You need to hear and you need to receive and say like Mary did. This is what made her so great. Lord, be it to me according to your will. It's the will of God that you become healthy and whole. And if there's something bothering you, if there's some physical malady, I believe the Lord wants to heal. If you feel like your life is barren and I'm not fruitful, it's, I'm not successful. 
the Lord wants to touch your life and make you productive, make you, fruit, make, you, make you fruitful and make you fulfilled. And so what he comes to bring to us today is he comes to bring uh, peace. If you struggle with uh, what you've done in the past, I don't know if anybody does that or not, but all of us have a past. All of us have a past. There's all things, there's things that, that uh, you don't want anybody to know and you're afraid that they might find out. Here's what I want you to know. There was, there was a pastor that I knew who uh, was concerned because he was, he was kind of a rough and tumble, carousing kind of guy, and uh, he was so afraid of, of uh, that getting out. And so he, he this, there's one woman in the congregation who heard from the Lord, he knew heard from the Lord, and he said, you know, I wonder if you'd mind, you hear from the Lord, don't you? Yes. Would you mind asking the Lord um, what I did when I was in college and see what he tells you? He said, I felt so bad about this. I've struggled with this for so long. Would you ask him? And she said, sure. And so she went home. She prayed that week, and she came back, and the pastor couldn't wait to get to her. and said, did you ask him? Yes. Did he answer you? Yes. What did he say? He said, I don't remember. When you're forgiven, he doesn't forget, but he doesn't remember. There's a difference. He chooses not to remember. And if you're dealing with something that you've done a month ago or, or 20 years ago, I want you to leave here at peace. Be at peace with the Lord because your past has been taken care of and your present circumstances taken care of. Imagine a teenage girl, pregnant, and, and uh, can... It's no different today. It's probably worse then than now. But that's what uh, the, uh, when Jesus became prominent, you know, the religious leaders went out and tried to surface all the dirt they could surface. And there was a, a just above Nazareth was a, a, a town, Sepphoris, where there's a lot of building going on. It was a Roman town. And, and Joseph probably did some work in Sepphoris. And certainly the Roman, it was a Roman city. There's a lot of Roman soldiers there. And, and so when the, the neighbors heard that Mary was pregnant and knew that she had not yet married Joseph, it was scandalous. It was scandalous. So in John chapter 8, if you want to tick Jesus off, you want to see Jesus ticked off, go to John chapter 8, where uh, you talk about any, anybody's mama, even Jesus' mama, yeah, that ticked him off. And because uh, he said, uh, we, know, we know where you're from. You're, 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 from, you're born of fornication. And he said, I know where you're from. You're from your father who's the devil. <laughs> Jesus got pretty hot about that. If you read John 8 with that in mind, you'll understand that. They were trying to attack his mother, and he came right back at him. And uh, that's, a, that's a, I'm not going to get into that. But just all this to say, your past is taken care of and your present problems. He has the power to deal with no matter what they are. And as far as what's ahead, I mean, this is what he loves to do. He handles the future, past, present, and future. Everybody has one. He'll take care of the past, you know, because that's what he does. He forgives and he remembers no more. He takes care of the present. He has the power to deal with every problem and the future. Be at peace. He wants you to live in peace and receive from him from his fullness we have all received. So Jesus came to bring peace. Uh, John chapter 14 uh, says this, says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. It's not as the world do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled and don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. How? Peace. Jesus came to leave peace and not just peace, my peace. Say my peace. My peace. That's the peace of Jesus. Uh, he was an amazing person, but the one thing was he was peaceful. And in the middle of all this stuff, he never, he never, got, he never got ruffled. Never got mad. Anybody else that peaceful? I'm not going to tell stories on me, but I could. But, you know, stuff, traffic this time of year bothers me. <laughs> but I'm not going to get into the traffic stories again. But, so number one, he's come to bring peace. Number two, he's come to fulfill the promises of God. Uh, Matthew chapter 1 uh, tells the, 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 the uh, story of Jesus and gives the, the uh, genealogy of Jesus and then, and then it says this, uh, 
J Joseph is a just man, not wanting to make a public example of her. He's going to put her away privately. And he thought about things, and an angel appeared to him in a dream. Now, Joseph had two dreams. It was part of the, it's part of the miracle of the season. He had a dream, and the first dream was this. Don't be afraid to take Mary for your wife, because what's conceived in her is a miracle. It's of me. So Joseph, Joseph married her. And the second dream that he had was when, when uh, the, the wise guys had come, magistrates had come. They left a different way. And he, in a dream, the, the Lord said to him, get out of here and go to Egypt because they're going to they're gonna be after you. And so, so he did. So there, there are dreams. There are angels. There, there's uh, all, all kinds of things that take place. But he came to fulfill promises. Do you know that there are, just concerning his coming, there are over 300 promises in the Bible. 300 prophecies, I mean, prophecies about him coming. And for them to, to come to pass, I wrote down 10 of them. And you'll recognize the 10. He was going to be born in Bethlehem, Micah chapter 5. He, she was going to be a virgin, Isaiah 7, chapter 14, which is critical because... Uh, she did not have the rotten DNA. That's the thing that the enemy has tried to do since Genesis chapter 6, which is another, another message. But he's been trying to disturb and, and ruin the DNA in mankind from the seed of woman, from the, the, from the seed of Satan. He's been trying to do that for, ever since John 3.15, or Genesis 3.15, the promise was, was, would be the seed of the woman would destroy you. He's been trying to disrupt the seed. So as a good as a virgin, you say, well, virgins can't, how can they get pregnant? It's a miracle. And they had no DNA, he had no DNA in him from Joseph. It was from the Spirit of God, which is why, by the way, you know, I think when he went to heal the man who was born blind, remember what he did? He put on him perfect DNA, spit on his eyes, and put on him this perfect DNA, and, and supernatural healing took place. Never happened before. Man born blind suddenly sees. It's, the, it's a miracle of the virgin birth. Let me continue. Uh, that they would present gifts to him. That, that, that Herod would come to kill the children, Jeremiah says. That he'd be preceded by a messenger, uh, Isaiah 40 says. That he have ministry in Galilee, Isaiah 9 says. That his ministry would be a ministry of miracles, Isaiah says. He'd teach in parables. That he'd enter the temple, Malachi says, and he'd be light to the Gentiles or light to all the world. Now, you say, well, what is the big deal about that? Prophecy is so critical because what prophecy tells you is two things. Number one, the Bible's true. God's word is true. And number two, he's faithful to perform his word. Now, I gave you 10 of 300 because who wants to hear 300? I don't want to. I didn't want anyone to write more than 10. I was going to do less than that, but 10. But I, I did 10 because statistically, what would be the odds of all 10 of these things happening randomly in, in someone's life? I can tell you, one with 72 zeros after it. One to the 72nd power. What that means is this. I can't even say what the number is, uh, it's, but it's impossible. It's impossible. And so... Uh, there's two, two stories that uh, a friend of mine who wrote a book about this uh, said. One was for the, the, the same chance of that happening would be uh, of a tornado hitting a junkyard and assembling together a 747. <laughs> Do you think that's going to happen? No, that's not going to happen. And the other story he tells is if you were to, to line the state of Texas with, with two feet of silver dollars and blindfold a person. You'd, you'd mark one and drop him somewhere, who knows where, drop someone. And then blindfold somebody, turn him loose. The odds of him picking up that one that you dropped in two feet of silver dollars is one to the 72nd power. Not going to happen. But Jesus coming down here at Christmas time, born in Bethlehem, born of a virgin, ministering in Galilee, ministering in, in, in miracle, all these things, is, is God at work. He fulfills his promises. If the Lord has promised you something or said he would do something for you, the Lord is faithful to perform it. Don't give up, you know, because Zacharias 
was an old guy and, and, and Elizabeth was an old gal, but uh, God does miracles. Uh, anybody old here want to have a baby? <laughs> no, thank you. Just thank you, Zacharias. Thank you, Elizabeth. No, thank you, Marcia. We're not doing that anymore. That's, <laughs> that page has been turned. Uh, number three, I'm going to move on from that. Number three, that Jesus came, number one, to bring peace, number two, to fulfill promises, and number three, to purchase our salvation. This is the greatest thing in the world. For unto he was born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. He has come to save you and redeem you. Uh, from what? From you. You know, uh, sin is a word that has an eye in the middle. Because the problem is I. We have an I problem. And Jesus came to deal with the I problem because there's nobody here who's not, correct? Nobody here is not sin? You know, I've talked to somebody. In fact, I was talking with a guy last night who, who said he talked to his neighbor. His neighbor said, well, you know, I, I don't sin. I haven't sinned. I said, I'd like to meet that guy. <laughs> Anybody who thinks they haven't messed up, I'd like to meet that guy. Because everybody here has messed up. True? So Jesus came to purchase salvation. How did he do that? With his life. His life for your life. You, ha you, you owed a debt you couldn't pay, and he paid a debt he didn't know. Uh, he came here to die for us because, because he loves us. And in a, in a world that's full of rejection, uh, and I don't know where you've come from in your past, but many people that I talk to feel they wouldn't say rejected, but they don't feel like they're, the, they're that person. You know, I'm not, I wasn't ever that academically smart. I was not that attractive. I didn't have that much talent. I was not the homecoming queen. I was not the whatever. They don't feel that way, but here's a, here's a word for you today. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Of all the people, and when I was in sixth grade, <laughs> sixth grade gym class, one, one period of time, we did square dancing. Anybody else go through that thing? Honor your partner. Um, honor your corner. Now take your partner and swing. Now promenade. I still remember that stuff. I was in the sixth grade, and I hate it so much, it's just stuck in my head. <laughs> so, but I remember the way they did it back then. For me, was the girls got to choose the guy. So when they, they, all the guys would line up in front of the stage and the girls would get to go and ask the guy if he'd be the partner. So, you know, when you're doing that, you don't want to be the loser that's not chosen. So you're kind of eyeballing the babes, kind of nodding your head like, here I am, here I am, pick me. <laughs> but you always feel bad for the one who was chosen last. And maybe that was you, uh, but I can tell you this, in the kingdom, that's not you. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. And Jesus came because he chose you. You are chosen. Turn to somebody and say, he chose you. A friend of mine has two, two natural kids, a boy and a girl, and then he adopted uh, a child who was troubled, and he, that's why he adopted him. He, he didn't adopt him. First, he first he was a uh, foster foster parent. Then and then when he saw how troubled he was, uh, he said, "I need I need a while to take care of this kid." And he and he uh, adopted him. And I said to him, "I said, was that difficult for you?" He said, "Oh yeah, you know you can't imagine." Because he was everything. I mean, uh, my friend was Swedish, <laughs> and he was like white as a ghost. And it, his son that he's adopting was not. He was part Indian, part African American, part who knows what. And, and, uh, and it took a while. It took a while, but love prevailed. And kids at school said, you know, would say to him, 
uh, you're adopted, you're adopted. You know, you don't have a mom and dad. And, and he said, what I learned to say to him was, when kids say that, you say, no, your parents had no choice. I was chosen. Isn't that great? And he said, he said, what's the difference? He said, you grew in your mommy's heart, not, not her tummy. This is so good. That, that was Tom and Peter. And uh, anyway, that's what, that's what God does. You've grown in God's heart. And he loves you. And he's chosen you. And he's called you for a purpose. And you say, what's the purpose? I don't know. But I do know this. A lot of people get detoured. A lot of people get off track. A lot of people get messed up. The Holy Spirit has come to get you back on track so that you, you, you're living for a purpose. And salvation it covers everything in your life, but it covers the way you're supposed to live. Live with a purpose in mind. Live for a reason in mind. And live for him and know that you are chosen. Maybe it's the first time in your life. But you're chosen first. You are first. You are loved. You are accepted. We talk all the time about, have you accepted Jesus? Yes. But let me tell you something greater. He's accepted you. He loves you and he accepts you just the way you are. Not happy to leave you like that. But he is going to change you because he loves you so much. He's not going to let you be the same person that you are right now. And that's a day-by-day -day process. They, they, my friend and his wife loved this, this, this messed up kid to health and to life. And uh, that's, that's what the gospel is all about. Redeeming people, purchasing, paying the price uh, that no matter what, you, what you've done, or he, he buys it back. Rocky's Pawn Shop's down here. I know he's come to church every now and again. And uh, if you ever pawn something at Rocky's Pawn Shop, you know, you take your watch down there and say, I need some quick money, and so you give him that. You can redeem it, but you got to pay the price to redeem it. And when Jesus came, because Adam gave planet Earth back and he gave all of us up, he redeemed it with his own life. The most expensive, precious thing in the world. God so loved the world that he gave his son, paid for his son. And if you don't know that, that's the Christmas message. Don't get focused on the shepherds and the wise men and all the focus is on Jesus and the reason why he came and what he wants to bring to you today. I don't want anybody to leave here troubled. I want you to have peace and leave here with peace and awareness that you are bought and paid for. You've been bought with a price, the Bible says. And so let nobody say anything less about you. He's got a plan and a purpose for your life. Let's pray together. Can we please? Father, we thank you today that you love us so much that you guide us into the path that we're supposed to go, and you purchased us, bought us back, so we can become what you want us to become. Help us, Lord, who are on a detour. Help us, Lord, those of us who are anxious now because we've got problems. Lord, you've come to deal with those problems as well. This is a season of miracles. You speak to us. You touch us. You want to make us whole. So let nobody leave here, Lord, anxious about anything. We pray, Lord, that you would establish peace. You would keep in perfect peace those whose mind is stayed on you because they trust in you. Lord, we trust you. Thank you that you can heal. Thank you that you can deliver, that you can provide, that you can protect. For all you are, Lord, we bring to bear right now your purpose and plan in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.